Hi, this is Dr. Anime Shah. I am a consultant clinical oncologist and today we will be discussing about endometrial cancer. So, uterus is a small hollow pear-shaped organ in women's pelvis in which fetus develops. So, according to National Cancer Institute definition, uh, any cancer developing in the lining tissues of uterus is called endometrial cancer. Uh, the most common endometrial cancer type is adenocarcinoma. According to Globocon data 2020, there are about 16,400 new cases of endometrial cancer in 2020 in India along with uh, 6,400 death. Now, uh, Coming to the risk factors of endometrial cancer, increasing age is one of the risk factors. Obesity is the second most common risk factor in endometrial cancer. Uh, along with that, the third common risk factor is unopposed exposure to uh, estrogen, which may be in the form of hormone replacement therapy or uh, long term use of tamoxifen, which is used to prevent breast cancer. or increasing years of uh, menstrual cycle, nulliparity, polycystic ovarian syndrome, infertility, etc. Next, a genetic factor. Genetic factors associated with endometrial cancers are a positive family history of uh, endometrial, colorectal or breast cancer. Number two, Hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer or Lynch syndrome also increases the risk of endometrial cancer. Next, atypical endometrial hyperplasia. It is a pre-malignant phase of endometrial cancer which in long run can turn into endometrial cancer. The commonest presenting symptoms of endometrial cancer is postmenopausal bleeding. Uh, the other presenting symptoms are abnormal vaginal discharge, uh, abnormal bleeding like intermenstrual bleeding or postcoital bleeding or excessive menstrual bleeding, etc. A uh, patient can also have a pelvic pain or mass in pelvic region or lump in the pelvic region. Uh, when the cancer spread to local lymph node, it might cause some pelvic pain, renal failure, or it might cause bleeding uh, through urine or bowel symptoms like constipation, rectal bleeding, etc. When the cancer spread to distant organ, it might present with uh, breathlessness, uh, jaundice or bone pain, etc. Whenever a patient comes to us with these symptoms, we take a detailed history of the patient. We clinically examine the patient with a detailed gynecological examination. We ask for routine blood test and transvaginal ultrasound is often the first test we recommend to check for endometrial thickness. Sometimes patient will have a hysteroscopy and a endometrial biopsy. Once the diagnosis of cancer is confirmed, we recommend the MRI pelvis to check for local extent of the disease and a CT chest, abdomen and pelvis to check for any distance spread. PET CT scan is done in selected cases. Uh, in advanced cases, when we are su uh, suspecting cancer extension to the uh, bladder or bowel, we sometimes recommend cystoscopy or uh, sigmoidoscopy. Based on the tumor size, extent, spread of the cancer to uh, lymph nodes or distant organ, Endometrial cancer can be divided into four stages, stage 1 to 4. Treatment of endometrial cancer depends on various factors including patient's age, patient's general fitness, patient's comorbidities, stage of the disease and what the patient wishes. Now coming to the treatment of stage 1. Stage 1 endometrial cancer patients are usually treated with surgery followed by selective radiotherapy in high risk cases. The radiotherapy can be in the form of external radiation or internal radiation also called intraluminal battery therapy or their combination. 
Now coming to treatment of stage 2. This group of patients are usually treated with surgery followed by radiotherapy after surgery. Now coming to the treatment of stage 3 to stage 4a endometrial cancer. Surgery is still the preferred mode of treatment in this group of patients. If the patient is unfit for surgery due to local extent of the disease or medical fitness of the patient, then radiotherapy with chemotherapy can be used as a treatment. But uh, in some cases, patient might not be fit enough for undergoing curative treatment or the disease extent might preclude us from using the curative intent treatment. In those cases, palliative chemotherapy, palliative radiotherapy and hormone therapy can be used to control the cancer. Treatment of stage 4. Uh, this group of patients are usually incurable. The intent of treatment at this stage is to try to control the cancer, try to control the symptoms from the cancer and try to improve the quality and quantity of life for the patients. The primary treatment at this stage is to treat the patient uh, with chemotherapy and sometimes palliative radiotherapy may be required to control symptoms like bleeding or pain. And recent advancement in uh, cancer treatment is exploring the role of immunotherapy in treatment of stage 4 endometrial cancer. When a radiotherapy is con contemplated, intensity modulated radiotherapy or IMRT techniques are preferred over traditional or conventional treatment. This technique has been showing promising result uh, and with this technique we can treat the cancer precisely with reducing the dose to surrounding normal organ and thus reducing the side effect from the radiation. Endometrial cancer patients often benefit from internal radiotherapy also called brachytherapy. There are various forms of internal radiotherapy or brachytherapy. A commonly used technique in endometrial cancers are intracavitary brachytherapy or ICRT or intraluminal brachytherapy. These techniques can deliver high dose of radiation to the tumor in the uterus and with reduced dose to the surrounding normal organ like bladder and rectum. Endometrial cancer, if detected early, can be cured with available treatment. At stage 4, uh, this cancer cannot be cured. The primary aim of treatment is to try to control the cancer. The 5-year expected survival for stage 1 cancer patient is about 80 to 95%. For stage 2, it is about 75%. For stage 3, it is about 40 to 60%. And stage 4, it is about 20%. Thank you for watching.